Body, we're gonna get started, okay? Mommy needs to keep drawing, and we're recording a podcast right now because this isn't every day. Although her sitting in my lap is every day. <laughs> that is I definitely, definitely every day. Say that is definitely is, every day. Anytime I sit on the couch, <laughs> this is where she wants to be. This is Benjamin Hedgepath, <laughs> and with me is always my is nah, me, me. You have trouble talking in I'm every a, single intro. It's the intro every time. It's that pre-programmed stuff. When I just get to talk off the top of my head, I'm fine. But this isn't every day. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that also no. is every day. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So funny. So funny. So I know I am. Yep. All right. Well, this is Benjamin Hedgepeth. And with me, as always, is my wife, Elizabeth. And we are sitting on our sofa in the front room, sitting on the couch. Let he speak. speak. She doesn't have a treat. She's not going to speak without a treat. You know, sometimes she does speak just because it's like her favorite <laughs> trick. Yep. She normally jumps ahead to speak. She is the newest addition to our family. She is two years old. Mm -hmm. Yep. Our kiddos are all teenagers, and that's a sign that we have been married for quite some time. Mm -hmm. What happened last summer, Elizabeth? We were we celebrated our 20th anniversary. 20th wedding anniversary. Now, that doesn't happen every day. That does not happen every day. It would be weird. If that's like that Elmo wanted it to be Christmas every day. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and it ruined it. It yeah. ruined Christmas by having it happen every single day. Was that on VH? I think that was on VHS, wasn't it? I have no it? idea. I, that my was so long ago. My sister, when she was little, it was like one of her favorite movies. <laughs> yeah. Almost Christmas Wish. She ruined right Christmas. There. Yep. I wanted it to be Christmas every day and nobody got, got to go back to work. And you would be impressed. That by sounds the familiar right now. Same <laughs> number of toasters there were on Sesame Street. Remember, yeah. like because the, and they all broke. Yep. Because they were waiting to be repaired, but because it was Christmas, nobody no one was could working. repair toasters. That's right. I was like, Crazy they were times. all stuck in this Groundhog Day world too, because they all knew that they were repeating the same yeah. day over and over, over again, over and too. over and over again. <laughs> Very true. Which made it kind of funny because they could have just said, "Oh, we're going to work today." Yeah. And it would have been okay. But no, but, it's Christmas. You don't work on Christmas. No, it's like... Oh. Unless you work at Waffle House or, you yeah. know... <laughs> In the healthcare field. Healthcare, yeah. There's several people. Yeah. Who do so work. It's super windy here today, which is kind of wild. But uh, yeah, so 20 years, 20 years married. That mm -hmm. is not an everyday thing. I do love you more and more every day still. Well, yeah, that's yeah. how that works, isn't yeah, it? it is. It's, that grows. It doesn't mm -hmm. stay the same. If it no, stayed the no. same, we would... That would be kind of weird. Yeah. I love you the same amount that I loved you 20 years ago. When I Great. was 21. <laughs> yeah, we, we had been 21 for two months when we mm -hmm. got married. Um, we started dating two weeks after we met. Mm -hmm. We were 18. We were 18, and then we got engaged the following fall. Which now with an 18-year-old seems very strange to think about. <laughs> we were babies. Yeah, we were kids. We were so young. We were so young. Uh, let's give everybody our, our quick story here. We met in the same freshman orientation group in yeah, college. At, at Milligan. M at Milligan, Northeast Tennessee. Both of us from Northern Kentucky. I was from Louisville. Actually, Central Kentucky. Well, Louisville's Central, but it's the North Central. Yeah, Northern Kentucky is, is Cincinnati like, area. Those Cincy, are different. Cincinnati area, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm, from, I'm from Louisville originally. You're from? I was, Lexington is where I was living at, at the, the time, time, but I'm also Owensboro, which is Western Kentucky. Right. So you uh, like to live along the river for the first part and then jump into the middle. Yeah, then yeah. went to Lexington for a little <laughs> while. And then after we married, we were in Louisville for that yeah. time. But um, Yeah, we were the only two people from Kentucky. Yeah. Which we is, had some mutual connections. Yeah, had uh, we both went to similar schools. Yeah. We were at similar churches. We had a very similar background from that perspective. I think very we talked different for like in other six ways. hours that first night. And uh, my... Yeah. Sweet mates came, like, said, wouldn't it be funny if that's the guy you marry? So that, that <laughs> night, and I just kind of laughed at them. Oh, thanks. Like, yeah, right. Like, that's not, that doesn't happen. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, it did. It did. High five. Yeah. They were right. They called it. <laughs> uh, Andy Manili said the exact same thing. So, wouldn't that be wild, man? It's like, yeah, that would be kind of nuts. I mean, she's cute, and, but we just met. <laughs> And both of us had just come out of like pretty weird, serious relationships. Yeah. And we said we weren't looking for anything. No, I wasn't at yeah. that moment. So, and then you took me clubbing. Yep, I was the bad influence. <laughs> we went to Pretzels. <laughs> Shout out to Pretzels in <laughs> Johnson City, Tennessee. for a very long time. <laughs> I do 
don't even think it was open after we'd been there a year. Oh, probably not. Uh, I had never been to a club before in my life. And uh, you, you drug me in there. Well, I'd been there all <laughs> once. I, I was only one time ahead of you. Yep. So at yep. that point. So anyway, that was. Yeah. And our first date was uh, Pringles and peanut butter, and jelly, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at Sycamore Shoals uh-huh. uh, State Park because we were wealthy college students. And no, we just, you know, it started off slow intentionally, um, but then long engagement, three years almost. And then, yeah, married at 21. So yeah, that was that kind of the background. And it was. Yeah. And now we have an 18 year old. Yeah. One who's about to be 16 and we'll have one being, uh, it'll be 14 much later this year. They're all having even birthdays this year. Even next year, everybody gets to be odd again. But yeah, so that's just that's that's kind of the way things got started for us. Um, what do you, what is what do we talk to people about when talking about being married for twenty years? If there's any sort of interesting things we've learned or anything like that, I don't know. Like what? Like all right, so let's what? let's, let's hop in the I way mean, back machine here. Let's go back to the very beginning. What would you say were some of the initial adaptations we had to make when we got married to each other? Um, I had to get used to the fact that you like, and I'm still getting used to this fact twenty years later. <laughs> That you fall asleep almost immediately when you get in bed. Uh Uh-huh. And then you start snoring. Yep. So it's like I have to race every (laughs) race you to sleep every single time we go to bed if Uh, I'm gonna get to sleep. Yep. And uh, this pretty face had to come with some drawbacks, right? (laughs) (laughs) So it's like that's part of my um, When she says fast, folks, I'm I can fall asleep in less than fifteen seconds. Sometimes. Yeah. Mid sentence, mid sentence, like mid word. Yeah. Then I also know that you can have conversations while you're asleep. Mm hmm. Uh, and have no idea. I did that a couple nights ago. Yeah. Just a couple nights ago because I was having some issues. I'm still healing and came out here, told him what was going on. Yeah. And you had no recollection. I've often sleep on the couch when you're having a rough day. So, uh, yeah. It was funny because I thought you were letting me sleep because you had known that I'd had a rough night right the night before so i thought you knew and didn't think much about it because yeah. you let me sleep in a little bit that day and then no i had no said idea no clue. no clue yeah we had a full conversation i have zero recollection of it and that is not the first time that happened no i'm sure no. it won't be the last all right so uh, i fall asleep quickly you don't mm-hmm. um i i flatten the toothpaste tube you don't. No, I just squeeze it you randomly. Just squeeze, yeah. <laughs> and then I fix it when it needs to be fit. Like yeah. pull it back. I up. do it every single time. No, I'm not. Yeah. No. So that's the stuff people joke about when you yeah. get married. Like, oh well, she's gonna squeeze from the middle and you squeeze from the end. It's like, yeah, but you know, that's not make or break stuff. That's no, just like I mean, you adapt. You need to be right for the big things like yeah. finances and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. And neither one of us are super heavy spenders. No. Uh, so no, that kind of receiving and you know gifts are not my thing. I don't really care. You know, I want to make sure I have clothes to wear. Yeah, but but. for me, gifts are different. Like, you know that I like to get a gift, but it doesn't have to be like a super expensive thing. No, if I pick up something for you to drink, like a a drive-thru soda on the way home. Yeah, a Diet Coke from McDonald's is like a big deal. So it's not like I'm... So that you're not needy. No, I don't need super. You just need to know that I'm thinking about you if I'm not with you. That's that's pretty much it. That's not crazy. No. Yeah. Um, Yeah, the other day he picked up valentine's candy it, it, it's like the beginning of march and he like found this little thing of hershey's chocolates that was like 60 cents yeah and you're still working on them i there. know because i am i'm also she's like, really good at rationing i am very good at rationing and our middle <laughs> child got this too this whole little thing i think he's made a gummy bear last like 30 little minuscule bites <laughs> something like that i mean yeah. some unreal i mean that's just making drawing things out and right, making them right, last right. that's something i do mm-hmm. um Mainly because I don't want it to go away super fast. Yeah. But that's also another reason why I like surprises. Yeah. Because I don't want the surprise to be over too soon. Like, sure. If you could tell me exactly where my Christmas presents were in the house, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't go look until Christmas Day. No. I have. I don't want to take away the joy of Christmas morning. Right. From that, and I have like, and it's funny because it's like I'm not tempted. Right. Uh, on things like that. So as a child, I would have been uh, as a 40, almost 42 year old man. I know I'll wait. Yeah. Like I'd <laughs> much rather fine. have the fun of the experience. Yeah. Than, uh, it's than not that big a deal. Early. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so when you get married, you're, you're obviously you have, you're adapting to somebody else. There's new, there's old, 
family patterns from two different sides that are coming together. Um, my parents don't really do this anymore, but you know, we grew up, uh, we were late night snackers and we you never were, were, and you never were. And so that was something that we, we shifted and we had to talk between the two of us and say, Hey, look, either this is beneficial or it's not, et cetera, et cetera. And we don't, we try not to do habitual, just I'm sitting here watching TV late night snacking. Yeah. Cause yeah. We ate dinner and then that was it. There was never right. anything after dinner. And it just wasn't the way it worked. Especially through high school and even up through college when I was home. You know, 10 o'clock at night, chips and salsa time. You know, there are worse things you could be eating. It could be cake and ice cream time. I don't know. I think <laughs> I the chips and salsa to me is like a pretty awful thing to sit, have to sit here and listen to somebody <laughs> eat because I hate crunching noises. And that's something else you adapt to. Mm -hmm. um, you find out that something you do habitually or unthinkingly really annoys the person that you're going to be spending your life with. Uh, I believe I was eating dinner the other night and I may have been chewing with my mouth open a little bit, just a smidge. <laughs> every bite, every bite. I took a video. So, you know, I was more aware. I was less aware of it. Sorry, because I had had my headphones on. I was watching Star Trek so you wouldn't have to hear it, but because I couldn't hear myself <laughs> chewing with my mouth open, I just, didn't register, and uh, so my apologies. So, yeah. uh, but no, Beth legitimately has misophonia, which provokes that. Um, it makes a weird, like, if imagine nails on chalkboard. If, like, you don't deal with this, you don't really yeah. understand the full thing. But it's an involuntary anger response. Right. Like, it is unreal. Like, I want, I do not want this. Right. Nobody Trust wants me, misophonia. I do not want it. No. I And it gets to the point that you're like wondering, would it be better to be deaf at times? Like, when you, I mean, <laughs> dead serious. Like, yeah. it would be better just not to hear than to well, deal with that's, this. That's probably part of the reason we don't go to movies that often, besides the expense, is that you're literally sitting in close quarters with people you don't know. And part of what you do at the movies is eat crunchy stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's miserable for you. And so, no, that's just, those are, those are just some of the things you learn to adapt to because my love for you is more important to me than whether or not I get to open mouth chew tortilla chips at 10 o'clock at night. I'll just not do that. You know, it's, uh, you're worth it. <laughs> and, and that's just what it is. So, you know, over 20 years of marriage, you, you know, you make a lot of shifts and changes and compromises with each other and it's okay. It's totally fine. Um, you don't wind up holding, you know, grudges against the other person. I don't sit there and say, well, I wish I could chew open mouth. It's <laughs> <laughs> a weird thing to wish. Yeah, it'd be a terrible thing. You know, I wish like, no, I could just, I be, be rude, horribly you know? unmannerly yeah. and uh, just a slob. Yeah. <laughs> Let me do that more, please. So the goops, they lick their fingers. The goops, I don't know they that. lick their knives. They spill their broth on the tablecloth or they lead disgusting lives. The goops they talk while eating, while loud and fast they chew. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm glad that I'm not a goop. Are you? Uh, that was one of our things we the kids had to learn in their uh their homeschool stuff. Homeschool stuff. It okay. was one of the little poems. I'm not familiar with that one, but no, I mean then and so you make adaptations, you change. Um some people try to get married and thinking, well, I'll change the other person and they'll be no. better. And that's that's a fallacy. Um, I don't know. I mean, you can have some influence on the other person, but if you've got somebody who legitimately has some terrible habits and they're just an unfeeling person, you're not going to change that. Mm -mm. Uh, if you've got someone who has uh, no social aptitude, <laughs> you're not going to change that. I mean, there's, there's so many things that people think, well, once we get married, it'll get better. It's like, no, it probably won't. You know, you need to make those calls and considerations ahead of time, not after you've committed for life to somebody. Um, and so for us, over the court, we can get out of the, the negatives for mm -hmm. people at this point. Uh, there's been a lot of good stuff that's happened over the last 20 years, too, mm -hmm. uh, where we've been able to encourage one another. Uh, I've had my low points. You've had yours. Mm -hmm. And we've been there to help each other out. And uh, it's a gift that you get to give. Yeah, and we've, I know we've kind of picked on Ben a little bit in this so far. Well, that's okay. <laughs> we've kind of pushed on you. But, I mean, after we had the kids and everything, I had a really low point that lasted for years. Yeah. And you had to weather that th with me through mm -hmm. it. Sure. And so. Um, but we also identified it. It wasn't yeah. that it was rolling in the background and we weren't talking about it. You know, we knew and it was a struggle, mm -hmm. but we adapted. We learned. Uh, you made dietary changes because there were chemical switches that were flipping. 
we know it was a genetic past history thing because mm-hmm. what we've got three generations at least mapped out for this. Yeah. So it's not like it's a surprise and I don't take it personally. No. It was... And you know, depression and anxiety are real things and a lot of people deal with them. Mm-hmm. And I've counseled with enough people where, you know, one of the other people in the couple struggles with it and the other person acts like it's not even a thing. You know, I had one couple I was counseling and he didn't believe his wife was even having migraines. Oh, those aren't real. It's just a headache. It's like, no, if you've never had a migraine, you don't know how bad they actually are. And if you love somebody, you're going to trust that when they say, hey, I can't see straight right now (laughs) and my head feels like it's about to explode. Mm -hmm. They're not just trying to pull the wool over your eyes. No. Um, And I deal with headaches and migraines, but mine typically are less light activated, but Mm -hmm. sound like they sure activate in sound areas and it's not even that it's just sound that makes it Mm -hmm. difficult it's the matter of listening to somebody and then being able to process to speak back and to process what they are telling me Mm -hmm. like becomes very very difficult yeah and it's the weirdest like and for somebody who doesn't understand what that would feel like so i could watch a tv show and that doesn't bother me because i'm not having to process that in the same way that like somebody live with me Mm -hmm. is and having to have a conversation or even answer a question like do you need anything suddenly becomes really really difficult as silly as that is yeah (laughs) but i mean it's but again it's it it's a migraine i know it's a real thing you know it's i've had a few Mm -hmm. you've had a lot more and if you love somebody then you care for that person when they don't feel well you let them go back to the bedroom and just close the door and have their time and you don't hold it against them you Mm know um what are some other positives? <laughs> we keep leaning I'm into the sorry. negative stuff. I'm sorry. No, well, okay. but it is. It's part of it yeah. is just being there in those negatives, and those become a positive sure. because you go through that together. Okay, it's the the benefit of the shared experience. Yeah, yeah. and that's you come out stronger on the other side. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> our son just like reacted to something on social media yeah. from the other room. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> um, but I mean, we've had some good positives. We're, I mean, it's harder right now because we're kind of in a tough spot yeah uh transition right now but we made a cross-country move right that was a big deal together that was an adventure with the family and we've come out stronger mm-hmm. wiser emotionally yeah wiser mm-hmm. all of that like the amount that we've grown from that has been great i yeah uh, so no doubts on that no doubts on that hi puppy <laughs> All of our dogs bringing me toys right now. She's very proud uh, of and then rope. we've met some incredible people. Mm-hmm. We've met, done. I mean, it's just been a very big experience. And so sometimes measuring things is a little bit weird. Like you right. don't look at it all the same way. Like, oh, financially, yeah, it's been really rough. But but think socially, about it's been great. Socially, I mean, we have more support now than we've ever had. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're a lot more open with people. We have kind of we have a transparency policy that we've finally adopted. Yeah. Um, in the last. I don't know, four months or so mm-hmm. that's been like, and we've seen people react well to us just saying, no, this is where we are. Cause you know, social, uh, I don't know what the right phrase is for this, but when social expectation is when somebody says, how are you doing? You say fine, regardless of whether you actually are. And we've kind of got to the point where it's like, no, if we're fine, then we'll say fine. If we're not fine, then we're going to be honest with people and say, no, today's been hard. No. Oh, well, what's going on? And it's not that we're trying to be a Debbie Downer on people, but it's like, I'm not going to lie. Mm-mm. You know, it's not worth it. You know, if, if you want people to identify with you where you are, if you want people to understand what you're dealing with, then you tell them and you bring them in. Now, not, that doesn't mean I'm saying this to the Walmart greeter. No, 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 no. no this no, is no. like These real are friends. People that you not, trust yeah. in relationship with. Yeah. Just to kind of give yeah. the background on that but this yeah. is uh, yeah the walmart greeter smile and nod walk on yeah no uh, but for friends for but real for people friends. who legitimately care yeah yeah um, then you're open and you share these things um, and that's been good and healthy so um i'll share a resource here for people a couple things that we've mentioned so far because we're going to be wrapping up on time here um We've talked about love languages around, kind of indirectly. Uh, that's a great book. Uh, Gary Chapman, I think, uh, The Five Love Languages, if you're not familiar with that. Definitely want to get that one. Uh, Pete Scazzaro, uh, Being an Emotionally Healthy Person. Ooh, He's yes. got a whole emotionally healthy series for leaderships, for people, you know, all that sort of stuff. Highly recommend that. Um, kind of see where you are on the emotional health scale, where your spouse or potential spouse may be on that. 
And those are a lot of good benefits for things like that. Maybe we'll link some other resources uh, down in the YouTube video for this, mm-hmm. but on the podcast, you know, Hey, uh, just <laughs> those are two go start with those two. Uh, but you know, 20 years of marriage wouldn't trade it for the world ups and downs, highs and lows. Uh, real quick. We're hitting our 20 minute mark here. Um, we did have our 20th anniversary this summer. We did a full Highway 1 West Coast road trip. Mm-hmm. 10 days. We saw so much. We and finally got to go to um, Astoria, Astoria and, and stay Portland in the goondocks. In Seattle. Yeah. And the whole Oregon, California, Washington coast. Um, that was great. And lady, I love you. Mm-hmm. And Benjamin. I would, uh, again, I would do it all over again. Uh, But for a 20th anniversary, this doesn't happen.